What's going on everybody? Ian here with Miller Garage. Well, actually, it's Ian from the future. So, <laughs> I'm doing this video on installing the interior skins and I, you know, started shooting and was shooting, putting some of them up and all of that, but then I was like, I, I went back through the footage and realized I hadn't actually shot the introduction to the video. So, I'm having to now go back and shoot that so everything is a little bit further along then, you know, it should have been in the intro. It should have just been an empty airstream. But, um, <laughs> so we're going to go into the future a little bit and then we're going to go back and kind of start over from the beginning of putting everything up. But we are installing the interior skins on the airstream. And we're doing all new aluminum in here and we're using uh, actually a white painted aluminum, which is, uh, it's going to look really awesome. I'm excited about how it's going to look. And um, as you can see, there's parts of it here that are blue, and then we have some that's already has the film off of it. Uh, some of the pieces that they had already had the film off of it. Um, if you buy aluminum, make sure that everything has film, that it is in perfect condition. Don't take anything from an aluminum place. Like, inspect it all first, because the last thing you want is to put a sheet up and there'd be a big scratch in it from it being moved around or any of that kind of stuff. So um, be very careful. Now these pieces had a, a few marks on it from just rubbing and um, I was able to buff a lot of it off just using like a, a polisher on a drill. So um, we're still gonna be using those pieces so we don't have to buy all these stuff. Um, but just word of advice, inspect everything really good uh, before purchasing it and uh, that'll save you a lot of time and money in the future. So, um, so we're gonna jump in. Uh, we're, like I said, we're doing all new aluminum and I'm pretty much getting everything put in and clecoed into place. I'm not doing any riveting until we get all the panels up. Um, we're gonna get it clecoed in and then we're cutting out all of the window openings and any access doors and uh, you know light switches and all that kind of stuff. We're cutting out um, everything that we need to to get it all sized up and fitted up first and then once we have all the pieces in and everything is cut and fit then we will go in and rivet and peel back uh, and remove a lot of that film and I honestly probably won't um, take the film well no I'll probably have to to get some of the middle rivets but um, I'm going to try to keep as much of the film technically still on it that I can uh, just to keep it protected for as long as possible. So um, we're going to dive in and start putting the walls up. So back to the past, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops! 
Well, it looks like the whole saw fried the drill. So uh, I have, I bought that whenever I started the first Airstream. So it's been through a lot and I think it's time to upgrade. So I'm gonna be searching for new drills. Um, it's definitely a common tool used in Airstream restoration. So um, I definitely need a good one. That one was decent. Uh, I think the, the brushless option may be a better way to grow, ah, to grow, to go. So we are going to probably be upgrading to one of those soon. Um, so uh, obviously we're gonna have to pause on that for just a minute. Uh, I'm gonna mark the other side. So we're gonna walk over there and I'm gonna kind of show you what I did um, as far as this. So we're gonna pause on this for just a minute and I'm gonna work on some other projects and uh, then we'll come back to doing the walls and finish that up. Um, also need to be, need the rest of the aluminum to come in for the end caps and everything. So um, this may end up being in multiple uh, videos. So yes. So when we have the skin panels uh, now clecoed in place with the windows and everything removed, we're able to go in and basically just outline the frame of the window on the back side of the skin. So that makes it a lot easier than having to like measure and uh, try to get it right on there. On the Opus one, I uh, kind of, on one of the sections, I made it a little bit, it was a little off. Uh, so I had to basically create a panel to put around there, like a trim piece. And so I um, want to avoid any of that uh, moving forward and everything. So uh, we're just gonna use a Sharpie and Outline the window and then obviously mark where the actuators go and then I'm marking as well uh, the holes for the window latches. Um, and whenever you, you know, obviously when you trace it, the exact size of the window frame, uh, it needs to be just a little bit in. So I'm gonna cut basically with the shears, I'm gonna cut on that line. Uh, with the shears and the nibblers. So then that'll get it to be exactly where it needs to be. Um, and then for the stack windows, I'm gonna just have to measure the distance and draw that in. And then that'll get us uh, that dimension. Uh, luckily, we, we have the trim pieces for that. So I can use that as kind of a you know a final guide and a, a trace piece, so. So it's after dinner and I'm working on it again and so I'm tired and I'm attempting to still put together full sentences while I'm doing this video. So hopefully I don't sound like a bumbling idiot, but <laughs> I'm actually helpful to you. Because um, I get up at four to go to the job at the dealership and then once I get off I'm working on Airstreams pretty much the rest of the day. Um, I try to spend obviously some time with the family and help out and everything, but you know, putting in like another six to eight hours roughly on this um, stuff. So, but I'm enjoying it and we are working towards goals that we have, so it's totally worth it. So we're picking up where we left off and I ended up getting some new tools to help out with the job. Um, one of them was a new drill since we, uh, I, one of them was a new drill since I fried the other one that I had. So I got a Ryobi brushless drill and then I also got uh, a Makita nibbler for the sheet metal. Um, I had an air nibbler, but it just didn't work that great, to be honest. It was harder to control and, um, you know, at the time whenever I was using it, I just had the little compressor, and so it would work for about two minutes, or maybe one minute, if that, and then I'd have to let the compressor refill. Um, I do have the big new compressor, but that's not fully hooked up yet, so um, these I uh, used a friend of mine's whenever I was doing the other one, and it worked really great, and so I bought it, 
They're about 300 bucks, but I think it's worth every penny of it if you're doing sheet metal work. So um, we're gonna start cutting out uh, some more of the openings in the sheet metal. Um, I'm gonna work on this Vista window area here. Uh, this one, I'm gonna leave a little bit smaller right now because I'm gonna have to build probably some sort of trim piece for this. I'm not 100% sure what the game plan is here yet. Uh, Cause these from the factory, they have like that closeout thing that opens and closes. Um, and we're not gonna be going back with that. So um, I'm also gonna open these up just a little bit more. Uh, they're really close, but there's just a few spots of overlap. And then obviously where the window latches go. Um, and then I'm gonna test the trim piece for the stack window down here, see how that is. And then we're gonna come over and begin working on uh, these as well. So I have to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to cut these in place and see how that goes. Um, I think it may actually work better than like marking it and taking it out there. So we're gonna um, just be experimenting, trying some different stuff and see what works best um, as I'm, you know, adapting and improving all this kind of stuff. So we're gonna get rocking with the Makita Nibbler. So in certain spots, I'm using just bare aluminum. Um, this is gonna be where there's gonna be some cabinets, uh, like some shallow cabinets and then a, a counter in this area. Um, and so any of those places we're using just the regular aluminum because it's quite a bit cheaper. It's about half the price, I think, of the painted stuff. So um, a little way to save some money there. So I'm putting this piece in um, and then above it, wrapping up is going to be a white piece. So I just have to trim a few spots and get it in place. So we're now working on the back section and um, with, with pretty much all of these, the lower segment down here as well as um, this middle segment, uh, because of the curvature, both you know wrapping around and as the Airstream curves up, they're a little bit uh, trickier parts to, to get right. And so with the bottom one, I basically took like a piece of uh, paper and put it on there and try to get a template as close as possible and then I put it on the piece of aluminum, cut it out rough and then uh, fit it in there. And then this top piece, uh, it's basically just a rectangular section that is obviously larger than the spot that it needs to be in. Um, then I'm gonna start by attaching over here and then, um, you know, getting flush into position and um, then I'm gonna basically just mark and trim it to where it's uh, how it needs to be. So um, I'm gonna get it connected over here and then uh, attach it working my way this way to get it flushed up. And then I'll basically just trim it to be squared up there and uh, then cut it out around the window, so.
So I have most of the interior walls in, and um, everything is being held in right now by Clecos. Uh, there's a few spots in the back and the lower that I riveted in, because that's all uh, good where it's just the, the bare aluminum. And so I went ahead and, and riveted that, partially so I could free up some Clecos to finish up putting in the rest of it. Um, there's one section over here that I still need to do, um, but I need to finish up this lower part. And so um, we're just gonna end and this will be part one and then I'll shoot a part two of kind of more of like the finishing out the, the you know, just getting the uh, final fit of everything as well as riveting it all together. Um, and then I'm also, uh, they're gonna be bringing the copper to do the end caps in the front section uh, here in a couple weeks. And so um, that'll be a whole another thing is doing all that kind of stuff. So. So in the part two, we're gonna continue and just finish all of it. Um, but that is that for the walls right now. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and check us out on social media. And we will see you next week.